we have a result. If, if we have two sigma algebras, f and g are sigma algebras, let's write it sigma algebra. In this case, then intersection of f and g is also sigma algebra. The proof is very easy. Uh, we want to show that intersection of f and g is sigma algebra. Sigma algebra, by definition, consists of three parts. First of all, we have to show that empty set is inside this intersection. Uh, next, we have to show this is first part. Second part, we have to show that if A is inside this intersection, then complement is also inside this intersection. And last part is if two sets A and B are inside this intersection, then union of A and B is also inside intersection. So let's show the first part of definition. Obviously, um, since empty set is inside F, because F is sigma algebra, and empty set is inside G, because G is sigma algebra, it means that empty set is also inside intersection of F and G. So this is first part of our definition. Second part, second part, uh, let's show that if A is inside intersection of F and G, in this case, union of, or sorry, complement of A is also inside intersection of F and G. So if A is inside intersection F and G, it means that A is inside F and A is inside G because of this. But if A is inside F, then complement of A is also inside F because F is sigma algebra. And complement of A is also inside G because G is sigma algebra. But if complement of A is inside F and it's also inside G, it must be inside it's intersection, so, so complement of A is inside intersection of F and G. So it was um, second part of our definition, this. Next, let's show third part. Let's show that if A and B is inside this intersection of sigma algebras, then union, A union by B is also inside this intersection, part three. So if A is inside intersection and B, is inside intersection. This means that A is inside F and B is inside F. It means that A union by B is inside F. Next, it means that B is inside G because B is inside this intersection and also B is inside F because, uh, sorry, a is inside, once again, A is inside G and B is inside G. Why A is inside G? Because A is inside this intersection and that's why A is inside G. Why B is inside G? Because B is inside intersection and it means that B must be inside G. But if A and B are inside G, it means that union is also must be inside G because G is sigma algebra. So we have, so we have union inside F, union of A and B. And union of A and B is inside G. It means that union of A and B is inside union of F, sigma algebra, F and sigma algebra G. So it was first part of our definition. It was this intersection of A and B is inside intersection of two sigma algebras. This finishes our proof. So once again, if F and G are sigma algebras, intersection of F and G is also sigma algebra. Assume we have some set X and we have a power set of this set X, which is by definition set of all subsets of X. And in particular, as we know, X is also inside power set. Assume we have some, some family of subsets of the set X, which is inside, which is inside power set. And uh, now we are ready to define what is sigma algebra generated by this set of subsets S. So first, assume we have some sigma algebra G and S is 
inside this G. And this sigma algebra is called minimal, minimal sigma algebra if, if first S is inside G and second, for any sigma algebra F that contains our set S, we have that since our sigma algebra G is minimal, it's also inside F. So in other words, as soon as we have n sigma algebras, F1, F2, and so on, Fn. And each of these sigma algebras contains in itself our set S. In this case, uh, for any these sigma algebras, we must have that our sigma algebra G, which is minimal sigma algebra, must be inside this sigma algebra, okay? So this is a minimal sigma algebra. This is minimal sigma algebra by definition. In other words, for any sigma algebra F that contains S, our minimal sigma algebra must be inside this F. It's easy to see that our sigma algebra G, which is minimal sigma algebra, can be constructed as intersection of all sigma algebras Fi, which contains in itself our S. Why? Because intersection of sigma algebras is also sigma algebra. We know this from previous result. And of course, this intersection, this intersection, by definition, will be the smallest sigma algebra, because this intersection will be inside each Fi, because this is intersection of all Fi's. Next, uh, this set F, this set F is called uh, generator system. Generator system. And this set S generates our sigma algebra, our minimal sigma algebra G. Next, let's define what is a Borel algebra. This beautiful B stands for Borel sigma algebra. And by definition, this is sigma algebra generated generated by closed sets by closed sets of it can be r real numbers it can be r to the power n in this case uh, our Borel set can be denoted as br or it can be also denoted as b r to the power n so this is sigma algebra generated by closed sets on Rn, or just in R, when, when n is 1. So by definition, this is sigma algebra generated by closed sets, and this is minimal sigma algebra generated by this set. So any sigma algebra that contains uh, closed sets in Rn also contains in itself our Borel sigma algebra. Any set B inside our Borel sigma algebra is called Borel set. Borel set. Since any interval AB can be generated by segments, and we can write interval AB as a union of this kind of segments, it means that it means that Borel sigma algebra can be generated by open sets. So Borel sigma algebra can be generated. By open sets. And we have to say that our Borel sigma algebra B is strictly, strictly included in power set. And it means that since power set for R, when our set X is set of real lines, and this, we can call it beast, can be generated by this is set of all subsets. This is set of all subsets of real line. This is very complicated and very big set. And our Borel sigma algebra is strictly included. It means that if uh, this our set, we draw it like this, our Borel sigma algebra is inside this set. And this is very uh, strictly included. And it's very hard to construct a set which is not Borel set. Once again, once again, Borel sigma algebra is strictly included in power algebra because we know that this is also sigma algebra. This is the biggest sigma algebra. As we know 
for set X, for set X, two to the power X, which is set of all subsets, is sigma algebra, and this is bigger sigma algebra. So this is a bigger sigma algebra that contains in itself uh, R. And our Borel set, B, beautiful B, is strictly included in power algebra. And it's very hard to construct non-Borel algebra. And all subsets of R in practice are Borel sets. Next very important result is about function f being measurable in terms of Borel sigma algebra.